This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday morning, the 13th of November. I'm James Spann. It is way too cold for November. One more very cold night, then a nice weekend warm up. And could it be a stormy end to the weekend? Uh, let's go in there and take a look and see what we got this morning. Well, that's a deal. The uh, big upper trough is beginning to move off the East Coast, and it certainly did its job. It's put us in the deep freeze. Those were 5 a.m. observations. Those are not lows, but that's a pretty good snapshot of how cold it was right before the sun was coming up. Birmingham had dropped down to 26. That was our forecast low for this morning. Uh, 24 in Decatur is the coldest number up that board. Our, our sky watcher at uh, Black Creek, which is just northeast of Gadsden, in a bowl on Lookout Mountain, Vic Bell, he reported 19 this morning. Goodness. Around the nation, you can see it's just hard to get away from the cold air. And uh, again, it's going to be very cold again tonight. We'll go back in the middle 20s tomorrow morning. There are freeze warnings in effect for much of the southern U.S., from Texas all the way over to Savannah, Georgia, and Jacksonville, Florida. But after tomorrow morning, we start to warm up. That's the good thing about these early season cold snaps. They don't last too long. And by golly, look at here. This is the severe weather outlook and on day five, which is Sunday, the guys at SPC have defined a severe weather risk for places like Little Rock, Memphis, Paducah, Kentucky, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And uh, all of a sudden, we'll go from this uh, frigid mode to a stormy mode, and we'll keep an eye on those storms as they blow in here uh, Sunday night or early Monday. I don't think we have a big problem with severe weather, but then again, it's early in the game, and we'll take a look at all the modeling here in just a minute. This is the rain for the next five days. This carries us through Monday morning of next week at 6 o'clock, and this is showing rain amounts of about three-quarters to one inch. And the uh, latest model runs are a little faster with the rain. They've been waffling on the time. But then again, that's pretty typical for an event that's five days in advance. But it's beginning to look like the uh, big rain event will be Sunday night into early Monday morning. Let's look at modeling. This is the GFS the global forecast system valid at noon today at 500 millibars. Trough moving off the east coast and down below that, the weather cold and dry. Highly unlikely we get out of the 40s today. Both the NAM and the GFS are printing a high of 49. But at least the wind not as bad as yesterday. Tomorrow we start the day back in the mid-20s. I think we're using 26 as kind of a midpoint number. Of course, your low will vary depending on your terrain. But during the day, we start to warm up. We go back in the 50s tomorrow, mid to upper 50s with a bright, sunny sky. Friday, we head for the 60s as the warm-up continues. And uh, we think the day will be dry. We note some rain down in the Gulf. And let's take a look at uh, the weekend, you weekend fans. This is Saturday. And again, the, the confidence is high that Saturday will be mostly dry. In fact, uh, I'm beginning to think we can take out that slight risk of a shower we have in the forecast that would suggest a partly sunny day with a high around 70. That'll feel pretty good. Got the Auburn with a big home game against Georgia down at Jordan-Hare Stadium. I think the weather for that game will be fine. That'll be a 2.30 kickoff. Uh, this is Saturday off the NAM model. Very similar. But again, for now, we're still going to leave a slight chance in there as we'll kind of be in a warm air advection pattern. Uh, but I think most of the day will be dry. Sunday, though, all of a sudden, the model is faster. This is the GFS at noon Sunday, and it's got a batch of showers and storms blowing in here. The primary surface low is pretty far north. It's uh, just uh, above uh, Lake Superior. This is Sunday night at midnight, and that seems to be the main window for the showers and storms blowing through here. Again, that surface low way up in Canada, approaching James Bay, and with the support so far north, you'd think that the severe weather risk would be relatively low. You know, it's late at night, Sunday night. The instabilities are marginal. And again, we'll check the specific values here in just a second. And this is Monday at noon, and everything is out of here. So this run is clearly faster. This is the European valid Monday at 12 noon, and it's a tad, I'm sorry, Monday at 6 a.m. So it's a tad slower. Uh, it's kind of suggesting the main event would be maybe late Sunday night or Monday morning, um, but somewhat similar to the GFS, and it's got rain amounts of one-half to one inch in that uh, six-hour slot 
from midnight Sunday night until 6 a.m. Monday. So, uh, you know, in terms of the day Sunday, we, we could certainly see some rain, but it looks like the heavier storms arrive Sunday night, maybe early Monday. We'll check the instability coming off the GFS. This is valid at midnight Sunday night. And as you might expect, at midnight on a November night, there's just hardly any instability here. Uh, the surface-based capes are under 500 joules and generally under 250 joules per kilogram. Uh, and that's very, very marginal. And this is the bulk shear in the lower 5,000 feet of the atmosphere, and the better numbers are way north of here. And that's what we talk about, the you know dynamic support being so far north. So for the moment, things seem a little out of phase for severe weather problems. There could be some severe storms, again, back in Memphis and Little Rock during the day Sunday, Sunday afternoon. But as the storms move in here late Sunday night, logic with this would suggest that they will weaken and the severe weather threat is kind of marginal. But again, we've got several days to watch this. Go to Tuesday of next week. Hey, we're cooler. That's another cold air mass coming down the pike. Uh, highs will drop down into the low 50s with a very strong north wind. It's a, a 1039 millibar high. And uh, this is Wednesday, and that should offer a morning freeze with lows, I'd say, upper 20s. But then uh, we warm up maybe in the low 50s by Wednesday afternoon. That's a week from today. We'll check the end of the forecast uh, out there toward the end of the forecast. This is the 27th of November. This is the biggest travel day of the year, the day before Thanksgiving. And again, we're just looking for trends out here. And, and the trend that we have noticed is that the amplitude is not very high. It's more of a zonal pattern. It's kind of flat. And that would keep the cold air bottled up a little north of here. That's suggesting a little wave coming in here, maybe some showers on that big travel day around Shreveport or Houston. But much of the country would be Kind of quiet if this happens to be correct. And that's a big if. We all know that will we'll change. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by 4 o'clock today. If you can, catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and God bless. Hey, we're Trey and Melody Lover, and we're the host of Undone Redone, the podcast where we're not afraid to look around through the lens of messy. And we're very qualified to talk about messy. Trey and I were married for 11 years and divorced for six years and have been remarried for five years. And we love to bring people on the show that can talk about their own undone, redone message. So look for us on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. We'd love to have you tune in. Also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash undone, redone. Tune in, the show where we talk about the messiness of life.